As SpaceX's rapidly reusable business slowly unfolds, we entered a new era of space transport. I believe Starlink is going to challenge the ComSat market first and then the communications market as a whole. Starship, once completed, will dominate cislunar space and beyond. The numbers work out. But none of these possibilities are set in stones. Our assumptions of SpaceX capability changes often due to changing circumstances. Space tech is hard and setbacks happen. Booster 1056 rapidly disassembled after successfully completing its job. We do not know what happened yet, but this does change some of our assumptions about SpaceX's current reusability status. Starling Press Kit here expected landing of the first stage on drone ship stationed in the Atlantic Ocean and again attempt fairing recovery with mystery and mischief. As of now, with the latest information we have, none of those worked out. Not a big deal for SpaceX launch businesses, nevertheless unexpected for the booster landing part. Let's quickly recap the booster's previous launches first. SpaceX CRS-17 was her first launch. 2.5 tons of supply were sent to the International Space Station, including the orbiting Carbon Observatory 3 in the unpressurized section. Around 80 days later, the booster went on her second mission with SpaceX CRS-18. Another two tons of payload were transported. This booster flew for a third time in December last year with a Singaporean Japanese condo set that weighed seven ton, this time to GTO. Then we arrived at the latest flight of B1056 with Starlink satellites. This is the moment where the lost connection to the booster, apparently soft ocean landing were attempted. Not sure what happened to the booster yet. Scott Manley did have an anonymous source saying that the booster broke, so that's that. So what have we learned from these? Well, first of all, Booster 1056 has already done a stellar job in last year, completing two CRS missions, one commercial mission, as well as Starlink mission. But what's more important is that SpaceX is in a very tricky spot where it is not yet able to quickly reuse all of its boosters 10 times under a 24 hour turnaround time as it's aspired to do. In 2018, Elon wanted to achieve a 24 hour turnaround time for Falcon Eye booster by 2019, but 2019 has passed and the shortest turnaround time for Falcon Eye booster has achieved was 63 days for this launch and the booster did not make it. So obviously SpaceX is facing some challenges here. But does that mean that Falcon Eye Block 5 booster have a limit in 63 days turnaround time of four reuses? No, we do not yet have enough launch data to make that conclusion, just as we do not know if 11,000 kilometers re-entry velocity is Falcon Eye's current structural limit. But these are numbers that SpaceX has to break before Starship can do what it's intended to do. Starship's aspiration lies with cislunar trips that require much higher speed and Mars trips with possibly hundreds of passengers which require a higher turnaround time but are facing challenges shown by current booster limitations. The tricky thing is, if we do not build 24 hour turnaround time and a structure that can withhold faster deceleration into its design, we will never have a Starship that's able to do so. I'm happy that Starship is on a right track right now. The positive thing, however, is that SpaceX is working hard to make it happen. There are 15 Block 5 boosters made so far. B1 046 and B1047 were expanded after reused four and three times respectively. B1054 is expanded due to client request. B1055 and B1057 were destroyed and both are center course of Falcon Heavy, so high velocity during re-entry does explain their demise. Center core B1057 has the highest velocity and MECO to date. 11,083 kilometers per hour was recorded. But aside from this expanded and destroyed boosters, active boosters are all used multiple times. In fact, all missions in the past half a year were launched with reused boosters except for CRS-19. This is significant as it shows that reusability is paying off big time for SpaceX. Dividing the manufacturing cost of Falcon Eye over multiple missions, it makes a very profitable business for SpaceX. So that's where we are today with Falcon Eye Block 5's boosters. The aspiration has always been to use boosters as many times as possible and to achieve as 
short a turnaround time as possible. But so far, we have boosters reused four times, and the shortest turnaround time is 63 days. What we need to understand is, Falcon Eye is as powerful as a rocket can get. Its reusability is laudable, and none of these failures matter to Falcon Eye's businesses. So the key stake here, the reason why SpaceX must learn from these missions and the coming ones is how we can improve upon the design of Starship so it can be more successful, more robust than the current Falcon vehicles.